Well, here's a simple question that may require a not so simple answer. What are you supposed to do with your life? Considering that the average person bounces between seven careers in his or her lifetime, people may think it's hard to find exactly what they've been put on this earth to do. But according to author Johnny Moore, those people are wrong. Children seem to have no problem answering life's tough questions, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? But as adults, making those life-changing decisions can be tough, especially when we're trying to follow God's will. Johnny Moore says it's not as hard as people make it. In fact, before he agreed to take over as chief of staff for Hollywood's top grossing producer, Mark Burnett, he asked God for direction and got a clear answer. In his book, What Am I Supposed to Do With My Life?, Johnny demystifies how to make those tough decisions by discovering and following God's will. Well, joining us now is the author of What Am I Supposed to Do With My Life? Johnny Moore. Johnny, nice to have you with us. Thanks, Terry. Good to be with you. You say that for the last 2,000 years, Christians have bought a sinister lie. What is it? It's that God's will is hard to find. Uh -huh. And I, I know that sounds really unusual, right? Because God's will is, is basically one of the most frequently used phrases in Christian history. Mm -hmm. But actually, it isn't. It's a frequently used phrase in modern Christian history. And it's actually a whole lot easier than we make it. So a lot of people think of God's will as a kind of a moving target. Maybe you hit it, maybe you don't. But you say that's not so. No, no, the, the Bible doesn't teach that if you like make this one wrong decision, your life is messed up for the rest of your life. I mean, you and I both talked to so many people that they look back 10 years earlier, they did this one thing, the whole world is falling apart. And I, actually, the Bible only gives a few key principles for God's will. And, and actually, there are two main principles which I write about Talk in the book. Talk about those. Well, well, the first one is this one, and that is that God's will is more about who you are than yeah. where you are or what you're doing. God's will is more about who you are than where you are or what you're doing. Mm -hmm. See, so many people are, are, are thinking that the, the answer to this question involves a vocation or a location. I, mean, I saw Absolutely. it every single day of my life at, at Liberty University with students. They were talking to me, what am I supposed to do with my life? What is God's will for my life? Angst. And, oh, and, and stress. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, it's stress for parents, it's stress for students. I mean, how many people like, yeah. right now how many kids of parents that are watching right now are they're wondering what they're supposed to do. And, and one of the points I make in the book is it's more about who you are than yeah. where you are or what you're doing. What do you mean when you say that? Well, see, you take you with you wherever you go, right? Mm -hmm. And so in the Bible, actually, this phrase God's will is used very infrequently. And the primary use is, to the, is Paul writes to the church in Thessalonica. And he says, this is God's will, that you be sanctified. Yeah. That's what it was. He didn't say, this is God's will that you live in Thessalonica or that you yes. are a carpenter. It, you know, he just says, this is God's will that yeah. you be holy. And so a lot of times we think that you, you kind of have to make this decision or that mm -hmm. decision or you're wrong. But actually, God gives us a lot of freedom in our decisions because yeah. you take you with you wherever you go. That's the first principle. The second one, because I, I want to share we get to the two of these and then I have another question for you. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the second one is that God's will is more about going until God stops you, yeah. then waiting for him to tell you to yeah. go. And that brings up my question. A lot of people are so fear-filled that they're, they come to a fork in the road and there's a decision to make and they don't know what to do. What do you suggest? <laughs> so make a decision. Yeah. You know, actually, we get in more trouble by indecisiveness than, than yeah. anything else. And, and by the way, I'm not talking about making reckless decisions or illogical decisions. I'm just talking about using the good brain that God has yeah. given you, the wisdom that he's given you in his word. Well, what about, what about waiting? I hear this all the time. I'm waiting on God. I'm looking for a sign. I've asked for a fleece. I mean, you say not necessarily the wisest thing to do. No, I mean, Jesus said it is a wicked and adulterous generation that asks for a sign, right? I mean, could it be <laughs> any more clear than that? And actually, people who think about this, they, they think of people like the Apostle Paul, right? I mean, they, most people imagine that the Apostle Paul was like, begging and pleading for God to show him where to yeah. go when he was preaching the gospel. <laughs> but when you read the story of Paul, he wasn't begging and pleading God That's with God to show him where to go. Where did he go? He went to the next the big next city big on city. the Roman road. And then, and then occasionally he got a vision in the middle of the night that said, don't go that way. And so, so the point I make in the book is get moving in the most logical direction yeah. and then God will stop you and he will stop you. He will close doors, but stop waiting for him to open every door. You say we're custom designed for a purpose. What do you mean? I mean, God has been working on this longer than you were worried about it. God's been working on your kids longer than you've been worried about it. You know, look at Paul, for instance. I mean, 
If you want to understand the world Paul grew up in, you only need to understand three things. Roman politics, Greek culture, and Jewish religion. Yeah. Now, now I, I grew up thinking that Paul was the least likely person to change the world because he was like a terrorist, right? I mean, th mm. this is a crazy thing God did. But Paul was a Roman citizen. Yeah. Paul grew up in Tarsus, the, the center of Greek culture and thought at the time. And Paul was a, was a, a Pharisee trained by the top Jewish teacher of his time, Gamaliel. I mean, he was custom designed for his purpose. He just needed God to to interrupt his life. Mm -hmm. And I think there's so many people that are facing crossroads in their life and they're asking the question that I, I, I use the title of the book, what am I supposed to do with my life? And they don't know what to do. And, and the point I make is just get moving in the most logical yeah. direction because you know, so many people, so many people are caught in this decision paralysis. They end up doing nothing. They waste so much of their life. I mean, this is a story of my generation, the millennial generation, right? And God is able to redirect you. The book is great. What am I supposed to do with my life? God's will be mystified, available wherever books are sold. Johnny Moore, thank you. Thanks, What Jerry. a good word. Bless you.